right, good evening, anyone that tunes in, either now or later. This is my first live stream on YouTube, and I've done a couple of test runs here uh, with just some private streams. So I think I've got, you know, all the issues worked out. I got the cameras in place, microphone, you might not even be able to tell, but even green screen back there, it's right behind me. It's right up against the back of my head, but it seems like it's working thanks to that chroma key setting. So if everything works out here, this is going to be me sketching. Uh, so it's something that, you know, thankfully, comfortably I can do with or without an audience. I was going to draw anyway. So why not set up all these lights and cameras and make a big freaking deal out of it? And maybe you can tell, maybe it's unclear. I hope it's clear enough, but I'm drawing essentially a stormtrooper, although I think they might call these the Death Troopers in The Mandalorian Show. So it's a reference from that, if you watch that. Um, and, you know, I wanted to give myself, while I was sketching live, I wanted to give myself an opportunity <laughs> to do something that was like a little mindless. So inking is, a lot of artists will say this, not necessarily those exact words of like, oh, ink, inking is a mindless activity. But it's certainly like something you could split your attention for a little easier if there ends up being people in the chat uh, than, say, you know, trying to lay out a page or trying to pencil in everything and figure out, you know, what's the perspective going to be? Am I following the rules of anatomy, uh, chiaroscuro shading, etc.? It's like a very oblique Homestar Runner reference. Anyway. My big concern too, in terms of the technology, is I'm using, uh, I think it says in the, uh, the caption, the description for the video, that I'm recording, actually does, it might say it's recording with an iPhone, but I'm recording with my old Sony Xperia XZ, or XZ, if you're British. And that phone is now like almost, maybe five, four or five years old, and it still seems to stream all right using that free app, the IP webcam. Um, but I have noticed like the longest test I did was about 15 minutes and it got a little warm. So that's certainly something to be concerned about. If it overheats, it might just shut down and that'll be it for the art stream. Uh, it'll probably be the, it for the entire stream. Um, maybe you can tell I'm using webcam and then IP webcam for the phone to get the art at the same time, which is, that's the one I want. If it was just my voice and the art, I'd be happy with that, but you know what they say, you know, you gotta have on YouTube, you put your face out there. That's the you, that's the you in YouTube. And besides that, I've got the all, all the other beginner equipment here, Blue Yeti mic on my art table. You can't see it in the shot. But uh, that seemed, that's worked well for a couple years now, not just uploading videos to YouTube, but other uh, technical stuff, professional and academic stuff I've had to do, had to use it for putting together recorded projects. But, you know, there's some people out there who say there's better options. My big concern now is it's just on my art table. And this is like, again, you can't see it. It's an art table from Hobby Lobby that I bought for like a hundred bucks, or I think it might have actually technically been a Christmas gift. Thanks, Mom and Dad. But they got me close to 20 years ago now, and I know it doesn't look like I've been drawing for 20 years. It's kind of embarrassing. Hasn't been a lot of improvement, but believe it or not. But I've taken care of that, and my point was just like the microphone's a little heavy. I don't know, maybe eight, 10 pounds for that Blue Yeti. But I want to keep it, the computer's on another desk next to the art table. And if I have the mic, this is the last thing I changed, so I didn't check the sound. But if the microphone is right next to the computer in the last test I did, there was, uh, uh, you know, you're hearing a lot of the fan from the computer. So I moved it to the art table. I'm just hoping. Seems, seems dirty enough. Seems like it's working. So I don't know how much ambient noise is being picked up. if any, or even like say, just the scratches in my pin line. Can you hear that? 
This is stuff when I when I upload the recorded videos and I edit those in Share Factory on the PlayStation PlayStation Four. Uh, it's you know I can get rid of all the sort of ambient extraneous noise and the big thing there you never hear it is if I'm using Copic markers uh, the caps pop pretty loudly in that initial audio. Plus if there's something going on outside, uh, literally if there's a train going by I'm close enough to the train tracks you can hear a train in the background if one goes by and also airplanes overhead so a lot of mass transit in the background possibly. Again external noise that I know can be distracting to the audience. And it seems, you know, to me, it seems like I fixed this. I've got uh, a ring light over here that a buddy of mine was watching some videos. It's like, that's, dude, Evan. I'm Evan, by the way. Dude, Evan, that's what you gotta fix. The, the lighting is awful. It's just hideous. And it's like, to an extent, I know, but it's like, you gotta, I'm a big proponent of like figuring out as you go. And it's funny to me, like you compare like being on YouTube or going digital at all, like comparing being using digital recording equipment versus um, using uh, like tapes or film or, you know, like a, a finite media, essentially. It's like growing up, I had to, I'm old enough, maybe you can tell, I'm old enough to know or remember like if you, you had like a disposable camera, you had like 30 photos, so you had to mean each shot you took. But it's like digital, you take as many photos as you want. And same with like YouTube, there's no real time constraints or space constraints. So why not just, again, my point, just figure it out. Just like upload stuff, start figuring it out. If it's bad, you can always delete it later. Versus, you know, if you're broadcasting again the old way, if you had a broadcasting license, you were on television, you only had like a certain amount of time during the day. But what's the crazy, if anyone knows in the chat, let me know. What is that crazy statistic for how much video, like how long YouTube is? Like every day there's an upload of like, what, 4,000 hours a day, 8,000 new hours, some crazy amount. But you can believe it, especially if it's a lot of people like me just testing, just seeing like, will this work? And the other thing with YouTube, too, that I think is funny is, uh, well, not fun, maybe appropriate more than funny is that if you want to just do a mobile stream, a mobile live stream, you got to have a thousand subscribers. I'm not quite there yet. Someday, if I work hard. But you got to have a thousand if you want to stream mobile just right from your phone. And I thought that might be the easiest thing to do rather than getting the extra software and figuring out OBS and all that. Like I could just stream right from my old Sony phone. And no, it's a no-go at this point. Although again, it'd be the same complaint I think uh, I was talking about earlier where if I did that, then the audio would be you just hear like the audio from the phone mic. And it would just kind of probably smush all the noises together. So you'd hear the pin scratching, you'd hear the Caps popping on and off. Let me, let me try that. Wait, see, you do that. I did that right up next to the main mic. Probably heard that. I have no idea. I'll have to watch this back later and see. Actually, you know what? I don't know if anyone's trying to chat. Because it says unable to connect to chat. So that may be the last thing. If I pop it out, will that work? And now there's a ninja. I see a ninja, you don't see it, but it's like nothing to see here. Now there's a chat. Um, uh, it looks like I'm connected, but it's, if no one's saying anything, that's perfectly all right. The thing that would really bother me at this point is if there's like a lot of latency on, uh, on the drawing, like that might be kind of annoying to watch. And I think you can see like the uh, the mouse cursor as I'm fooling around. It's not messing with the window that I'm streaming from for the art, which is good. I figured all that out ahead of time. But you can see the mouse cursor going over the top and that might be annoying. I don't know. I try to be considerate if nothing else. Your mileage may vary. One of my favorite cliches 
tell people all the time, hey, I try, but your mileage may vary. Well, the other thing I might be, I might get a little more sensitive about, I already noticed this looking back, is like my posture. You know, I've met a lot of great artists. You know, I'm not here to criticize, but there's some great artists that get a little older, posture's not so great. And I can feel that happening to me, getting to that age. And I can see myself again on camera, got kind of a, you know, it's not great, but how are you gonna do it? I mean, could I really, could I have the complete arched back posture? I don't know. And one more thing that gets me, if you haven't noticed this, like if I look at myself, there's like a slight delay of what I see. And sometimes I feel like, oh wait, did it, did it freeze up, did it pause? So then I freeze up and it's just like recording live me frozen up. So all these things. Anyway, let's talk more content. What do you guys think about The Mandalorian? I enjoyed it. But I've noticed something. We did a, we did a review on the channel, Alana, my beautiful wife and I, did a review on this channel, Comics Comics, uh, talking about what we thought about The Mandalorian. Like many other people, one of the highlights for us was the little baby Yoda little baby Yeed, whatever you want to call him. The child, I think the official name. And he's great. That's great. I think it was a puppet. If it was CGI, it's amazing. It looks like a puppet. But I think it's a puppet. It looks real. It looks like a real object. So he's great. But that was actually spoiled for me. Like, I didn't... We had Disney+, Plus. thanks to my brother. Shout out to my bro. And we were watching it, but we waited... A couple days so there were already the memes had been coming out about baby yoda and now they're out there the memes are out there but you know at this point i think sport spoilers sometimes i'm not going to say they never bother me like if i'm i think the last thing that would have bothered me is i was playing the death stranding game and if anyone had told me how that game turned out before i was done reading it Oh, you should check it. Hey, Mighty, what's up? Uh, anyone watching this back later and sees Mighty in the chat, one Mighty R, go check out his channel. Great stuff. Says he didn't see The Mandalorian yet. I recommend it. What I was going to say about that, though, is um, honestly, like a lot of TV shows, I wouldn't say it's like five. I wouldn't say it's perfect. I think you should get Disney+. Plus. There's other good stuff on there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but, you know, a lot of shows, honestly... This is smartphone smartphone culture, and I'm going to admit to it. A lot of shows, even if you like it, you know, you'd be watching it, and then halfway through, you're like, I wonder what's happening on Twitter, on Instagram, and you look at your phone. And that happened to me with The Mandalorian. It happens to me with a lot of things. Uh, so I got to be honest. I don't think The Mandalorian was, like, so engrossing that I had to watch it and just, like, stare while it was going on. Anytime, Mighty, anytime. But the last thing, like I was saying, the last thing that really held my attention, I would have been bothered if people spoiled it, was the Death Stranding game. And then I think the last thing I was really, really offended by was years and years ago. So spoiler alert for the first Guardians of the Galaxy, because I want to be considerate of that. But before I went to see it, I think it was Yahoo, like Yahoo News or something, I saw a headline that was like, hey, Howard the Duck is in the new Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was like, I was livid. I was upset. <laughs> Mighty likes spoilers. Helps you decide what to watch. That's fair. That's fair. And I am getting like a little less sensitive to it, but like I said, with uh, Howard the Duck, like it would have been greater if I had experienced it, I think, in the theater. And then the new thing for this, I got a mutual, I got a buddy who, like me, is very much into the Fast and the Furious movies, and they just released the trailer for Fast and Furious 9, and I'm not going to talk a lot about that right now. I'll definitely do some more Fast and Furious fan art uh, at some point coming up in the next couple months, because that comes out in May. But if you saw that trailer, and you're a fan of all of the series, Fast and Furious, you realize, oh my gosh, they, they pretty much gave, I don't know if they gave away the whole movie, but they gave away a lot of big plot points. And it's like stuff that probably would have been cooler to be like surprised in the theater. But I get, at this point, I understand like the marketing. And we'll go see it in the theater. We actually, Alana, my wife and I already bought tickets for that first Thursday preview screening. For Fast and Furious 9. I'm super into those movies. 
I don't want to talk about everything that got spoiled, but I just say, you know, if you can resist, if you're a fan and you can resist watching this trailer, it might be a good idea. But actually, I wasn't, I wasn't that busy yesterday, honestly. So I ended up watching the complete countdown to the trailer. I wasn't anticipating that, but you know, I'm on YouTube a lot, as you could imagine. And YouTube was like, hey, you might want to watch this live event of Vin Diesel and the rest of the cast counting down to the trailer. I'm like, sure, okay, I'm in. Maria Menounos, one of my favorite celebrity interviewers. And what, I would say like maybe a mentor for me, not in person, but in terms of live action. You got a speeding ticket after watching Fast Five? That's, that's classic. I was actually, I didn't have a car at the time. I was, when Fast Five came out, I feel like I would have gotten in the same trouble. I felt like that before, like going back, because I've seen, I didn't see the first one in the theater, but I saw the second one. I never got a speeding ticket because of it directly, but I definitely, I get it. I get it. I felt the same way after like playing a lot of Mario Kart or Grand Theft Auto like old, old video game systems and then like going to actually drive. Mario Kart's real bad. Like if you play Mario Kart and then you go out and drive, you just want to start throwing banana peels on the road or turtle shells. And thank you. Thank you for the compliment on my artwork. Thank you so much for the support, Mighty. You know, when you're just starting out with live streaming, you never know what the response is going to be. And I've been very fortunate, I think, to... Um, have people on YouTube for the most part, 99.9% .9 be supportive so far. Very, very few, if any, haters. But you know, haters math. There's some like video I watched on YouTube about haters math. And it was like, if you get 99 upvotes, one downvote, what do you focus on? Focus on the, focus on the downvote. It's what eats away at you. But I try not to let that happen. Mario Kart is classic. Mighty, what's your favorite Mario Kart? Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Wii, Wii U. Thrilla, how's it going? Man, Kyle, Kyle, check out his channel. Again, people watching this later, a lot of people have been checking out his channel. Uh, he deserves all the love. It's going great. He was, uh, he took over Jazz's channel for a day. And you know, Kyle, what's funny about that is a lot of people went from Jazza to your channel, I forget if I commented this on your channel. A lot of people went from his channel to your channel, but I went from your channel to his channel. So Jazz has got you to thank for at least one more subscriber and me, because I went from you to him. But he's doing great. And his videos are awesome. He was drawing some Mandalorian stuff. I think he just did a Baby Yoda video the last day or two. Thrill, I understand. I really appreciate you dropping by. This is my first live stream, so happy to have the support. And I don't know. I don't know. I, like, I want to do more live streams, but I'm going to try to find, like, a regular... <laughs> yes, thank you, Polar Commander. Absolutely, that's the OC here. That's this character. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I want to find a regular day or time to stream, you know, schedule allowing. Because at this point, you know, YouTube is a hobby. It's not paying the bills. So as time allows. But it's like the great... <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, I think it is rare. I think honestly it is, but... I'm gonna figure out if Saturday night's good for it. I mean, my weekends are usually open, but not too late. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. I want to watch Saturday Night Live live as it happens later. So I'm going to be done by then. Also, how's my camera doing? It feels a little warm, honestly, if I'm leveling with you. It feels a little warm. But I'm going to see if I can get, I'm in about 20 minutes now, I'm going to see if I can get a solid half hour out of this. Or at the very least, the end of this, this inking. Which again, I am noticing the challenge of even Juggling a conversation with two good guys in the chat. Challenging enough, if I ever had 
I mean, you tune you tune into some people who are live, and their chats are just like. So again, like I said, it's easier to do it with when I'm doing something artistic that's not really cognitively intense. And that would be this thinking. I've got my pencil line set down. I trust those. I'm like, okay, that's where I wanted that's where I wanted that mark to go. You know what? I'm getting near the end of this one, but I still want to draw. So for the heck of it, I'm just going to slide in another piece of Bristol right here. I've been working on the Spider-Man page for years and years. This is actually a Lionel Francis U illustration that I redid that I referenced from him. But here is Mary Jane, Spider-Man shirt, taking a photo of him. Old pencils that I'm going to ink a bit right now and actually go to a smaller pen line. Unsubbed from Jazza, subbed back, started your YouTube channel. Glad you subbed back. Yeah, and I'm glad I'm glad that you, and there was another kid too, Ben, I forget his last name, but I saw that he got a ton of support from Jazza, and that was awesome of him, of Jazza, to offer that opportunity to uh, up-and-coming YouTube art channels. And again, Kyle, you've really made, I think, the most of that opportunity. Your videos since... Since that guest video have been really a step up, you've got good themes, good hooks, uh, engagement, look strong from my point of view. So just keep it up and you're on your way to, what do they give you first? The, uh, the gold, is it 100,000, you get a gold plaque and a million, you get a platinum, I forget what it is. And then eventually, what they get PewDiePie? 50 million, Ruby. Did anyone else ever get there? Did anyone else ever get to 50 million subscribers? I don't know. Yeah, Ben Mellinger. So, look for that name too. Another cool guy I subscribe to. YouTube's got a great art community, I think. Very supportive. So go check out his channel. He's been doing good stuff. He's a younger guy too, so he's got, he's got his whole life ahead of him. A lot of success. And, you know, again, like, I've been drawn for years, and it didn't occur to me until Alana bought me a camera for Christmas and this is like a GoPro and she started to encourage me to like record I think to record literally my art and I started thinking like I could put it on YouTube and I did and it's slow going at first but I was gonna draw anyway it was like I had thought about starting a YouTube channel more than a decade ago Thrilla inspired you to do more vids yeah yeah I mean what do they say I tried doing once a day it was I just couldn't keep up that pace. Once a week, if I check in once a week, I feel good about that. And, you know, I think it's, maybe it's a pipe dream, but if there was a lot of people tuning in uh, and there was ad revenue, you know, it's the dream for a lot of people, I think, to put, to put commercials on your videos. Uh, I'd probably do more. I'd definitely do more, but you gotta do the real job till then, the real job. Yeah, felt the fire. Was it? Yeah. And you were doing it, Kyle, you did it for like seven months. And then you took a little break, took a couple weeks off. And I think that was the right move. I think he came back stronger. But it's also good to have that base there. You know, like I've got some videos that people still search for. Like there's a lot of interest for... I think X-Men reviews, not particularly my X-Men reviews, but people want to know about new X-Men comics. And I'm a voice for that. Like, I have opinions. Maybe not the most well-formed opinions, but I got opinions. Hey, AZ, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but AZ, welcome. I love your channel, too. So another opportunity. As people look at this, I hope they listen to me, listen to my shout-outs to everyone in the chat, and go check out their art channels. Because I like your work, too. 120 days straight. Serious. Thank you, Azet. Thank you for the compliment. Just drawing, this is like uh, Spider-Man's girlfriend, Mary Jane. So if I had my Copics are around here, but I'm with, it's not within easy reach. I would just put in the red right now. But next time, next time. You know what? Again, why not just keep moving? I got another panel down here. 
This is, this one is based on a photo of Alana. So this is reference from a photo I took. This is, now we're picking up. All right, six viewers. A new personal best. Thank you, everyone. This is amazing. And how's my phone doing? It's about to burst into flame. No, it seems okay. I plugged it in too. I didn't know if it was going to be like the battery would overheat or if the camera overheats. Again, I know I'm jumping around in terms of what I talk about. Jung Dive. I like your art. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if, if I've checked out your channel. I will after I'm done here if I have not yet. Thank you for the support. But like I was saying, the battery, I'm not sure if that's overheating. I know with this phone, it's an old Sony. Old Sony Xperia XZ or Xperia XZ, if you're British. Uh, it's got 4K recording capabilities, but that's so hard to edit. Like, I just shoot in 720. And also, with 4K, I can record about a minute, and then I run out of space, and the camera overheats, and it just shuts down. Uh, I think the newer ones, like if you get the Xperia 1, which is still like a grand new. Uh, I ain't got money for that. But... If you buy one of those, people tell me the reviews say, does not overheat, and of course, much nicer 4K screen, but it was crazy. Even like holding on to this phone for four years, I think like I could probably get another year or two out of this, maybe. You record, yes, I am actually, AZ, I am recording. The art is being shot from my phone, and then I am checking out the chat on my laptop, which if you're curious, I think the big thing here is this is an i5, an Intel Core i5 processor, which is recommended for streaming like this. And it seems like it's working. Did I read any of the Ultimate Spider-Mans from about 20 years ago? I absolutely did. Mark Bagley. I met Mark Bagley. He was very friendly. Although, well, I'm not even going to say although. He was very friendly. Another guy who was also very, very friendly, let me put it like that, was the inker. I don't know if it was on those books, but he inked. Mark Bagley on Amazing Spider-Man around the same time. Randy Emberlin, Emberlin, that guy is incredible. Very friendly. I met both of them at different times at different conventions. And they were very cool. Got some signatures from them. Uh, I don't want to speak out of school. I think the rule for Bagley was he'll sign a book, maybe one or two free signatures. And then after that, uh, it's like three, four, five bucks a signature. Unless... You get it personalized, which I didn't even realize because I just wanted that anyway. I was just like, could you please sign it to Evan? I have no intention of ever selling the Spider-Man comics. Thank you very much. Uh, but I've loved his work and I love those Spider-Mans. It was, uh, I was actually, to age myself a bit, it was like my first year in college, I believe, when Ultimate, Ultimate Spider-Man launched. Mark Bagley is dope. Love that guy. And I did not, you know, at this point, what I really, really like is I have probably way too many comic books. What I really like to do is get more original art. I've got a little bit of orig original art from some artists. Now, this spider a guy who wrote, did some Spider-Man art, uh, Olivier Coipel, Greek, I think, and I hope I'm saying that correctly. Got a page from him and some sketches by other cool artists, but nothing by Bagley and no Spider-Man art. More X-Men art, honestly. More X-Men art. Yeah, there's some, I mean, there's some guys out there who can charge, Neil Adams is one, Neil Adams is a legend, and he can charge, uh, I think I got a signature for 20 bucks, and that was the cheapest option on a sketchbook he did, and it came with the sketchbook, so that's a pretty good deal, I mean, you get the sketchbook too, but if you want him to sign, you know, some of the key issues, I think it goes up a bit, 30, 40, 50 dollars, but he'll also sell books that have the signature on them at conventions. So that's a good deal. And there's other guys, Rob Liefeld, I know, the creator of Deadpool. Um, I, I think I missed the boat on this because I think years ago, I was still a, I was still a fan, but I hadn't met him yet. Um, and he was signing books for free for a while. But after that Deadpool movie hit, I think he changed it to like he signs merchandise in comics and there's, there's a premium there, which is, you know, more power to him. That's, prerog that's his prerogative, but... Again, like I said, if, I wish I'd got there before that to get some. Because I didn't even want, I have a Deadpool comic sign, but I wanted, like, I'm a Youngblood fan going back, Extreme Studios, so I wanted that. 
And I did eventually get the Extreme Studios 24th anniversary sketchbook signed. Thriller, thanks. Uh, <laughs> gotta go. Keep it up. All right. Thanks, Thriller. Thanks, Kyle. Have a good one. Thank you so much for checking out the stream tonight. This is going fun. I'm at 30 minutes right now. I'm going to keep going because I'm having a good time. And my phone hasn't exploded yet. Seems like, I don't know if you guys can hear the laptop fan. I'm hearing it now too. But I think it's got a handle on things. It hasn't gone into jet engine mode like my PlayStation sometimes does. The girl, sorry, AZ, I missed this part of the chat. The girl I'm drawing, uh, this is, we'll say it's Mary Jane, but it's actually based on my wife, Alana. It's a photo of her that I took um, and then used as reference for this comic book page. So I'm drawing my real wife, Alana, the real person, as the character, Mary Jane. And they're both natural redheads. So it's appropriate. And again, this was uh, a couple years ago that I drew the pencils here. And it's funny because I've got like a stack. I should put this on the stream sometime, just the stack of my original art pages. Uh, you get in a pack about 24, about enough to do a complete comic book of this, what is it? Uh, pro comic book art board from Blue Line Art, uh, hashtag BL1001. And it's about, say about this thick for 24 but I've got several hundred of those stacked up in the other room now. I've never thought to sell original art. I'm sure there's, at this point there's no interest, but I like having the artifact. And I have a lot of pages in various states of completion. I'm inking also, if you're curious, is that thank you so much saying she looks beautiful. Alana will appreciate that. And I appreciate it too. Um, so Pigma Micron, you can get these. These are great archival ink pens. You can just get them at Hobby Lobby, a pack in from like 0 0.05 millimeters up to 0.8 millimeters, or is it 08 millimeters, 005 to, 0, to 08. And you get, usually there's a sale like something half off in Hobby Lobby. So if it's like retail 20 bucks, you get a pack for 10. It's a good deal. Uh, they last a long, long time. If I was drawing more, they'd probably last a little shorter amount of time. And I also have a bunch of different pens that I switch. And now I'm going, I just, you can't really see because it it's rubbed off the top. But I'm going to the smallest size, 0 0.005. Mighty, thanks for, uh, you're going to show some of your, oh yeah, yeah. I, I want to see that video. I want to I see your video of some comics that you've got that are, that are worth an amount. I, wanna, I will definitely smash the like button on that one. But yeah, I keep, I get so distracted. That's live streaming for you. But I am, um, I work on a bunch of different art pages and I just switch from page to page as the interest catches me. Because what I've found over the years is that the final art really will suffer if I'm not feeling a piece, if it's not looking good in my estimation. I just gotta, I gotta move on to something. I don't stop drawing. I just move and I start drawing something else. And... I find that's really helpful. And that's actually been the biggest challenge for me in doing these uh, YouTube videos is getting close, at, at the very least close to a completed piece of art for something in the edited videos. I feel there's a little more freedom here. I can just, you know, chat and sketch as I'm going. But you know, when you put together like a finished video, you want it to be like, okay, here's, finished piece of art at the end and some people like mighty i think you're a lot better at this than i am kyle's kyle's really good at it too and az you're good at this as well you got some great stuff on your channel but what you know what i might do too is I can download this stream later, just download the video file from YouTube, let you do that to your own stuff, for your own stuff, and then edit it together, and Alana and I can talk over this one and get, I get her feedback. She's not home right now, 
and I get her feedback about, honey, how'd I do? How's the likeness? I'm thinking it's good. We'll see what she says. You know, the tricky thing too, you probably know this about drawing the female face, is that you gotta be really careful. Like every messed up line, it's not as forgiving as like, you, you draw more lines on a guy's face, just adds character. But on a woman's face, it's a little, it's a little trickier. It's a little more delicate. All right, Mighty, thanks for checking in. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. And you know, all right, see ya. Okay, hey, Zet, thank you for checking in. Or I might be just back down to me. I don't know, if it says concurrent viewer, I might be the only concurrent viewer. So I'm actually, I'm gonna go out on this. I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, I say at the end of my videos a lot, keep drawing. The only way to get better is to draw every day. And I gotta be honest, I got that from a t-shirt that was given to me by uh, a champion, a legend among men, Dan Frega, who also did work for Extreme Studios back in the day, was recently drawing a He-Man comic for DC. And I met him once at a convention. He was so friendly to me, so giving of his time. Uh, bought some art and some comics from him. Bought many comics that he's done over the years. And that's something he said, you gotta draw every day. So I got that from him. So that'll be my final shout out. He's not here. But my final shout out is go check out his channel, Couch Doodles, on YouTube and also Instagram. And he does very similar, I mean, basically I got the idea from him. He does very similar live streams in this style. So we'll say, you know what, that's it for the drawing, but I'll show one more page of some stuff I was working on. This is like Spider-Gwen and Spider-Man. You see there's a jet in the background for some reason. But anyway, that's what I'm going to end on. So I really want to thank everyone that tuned in either live or is watching this later on. And let me know in the comments, chat's going to be over, but let me know in the comments what you thought. And if you got any ideas about what would be a good regular time to stream, when would you be most interested in uh, watching someone draw on YouTube. Is Saturday evening not the best time? Let me know if Sunday evening's better. Uh, so until next time, everyone, keep drawing.